Professor Langdon, we need your help. Three days ago, a man killed himself. We think he was part of something much bigger. There was a package in his pocket. And what was it? I'm not a film guy, I'm a, I'm a YouTube guy. So is, is, is it weird that I'm here that there's a guy from YouTube? No, because no. this is the natural order of things now. You know, I, but what did they call you? A social influencer. A social influencer. You're just actors and things. You're a social influencer. Actually, you guys influence me. So it's kind of weird. Yeah, it's like this a, a step down. <laughs> You have a big responsibility. I hope you sleep well. You know? <laughs> That's actually a question I want to ask you guys. Do you guys, when you guys are making these films, do you guys sleep? Like, is it is it possible to sleep when you're making such a huge thing? We were talking about this at lunch today. Yeah. I, my problem is that I, I can go to sleep, but if I wake up in the middle of the night, I got to go to the bathroom or whatever, I'm done. It's over. If it's, I'm in the middle of shooting, you know, the day has already started for me. The shot list is t taken, char you know, t takes over everything else. Is it, is it easy for you as an actor? or is it? Well, it's a marathon, you know. The thing that I get, I don't have to deal with as many potential disasters as he does. <laughs> but what I, what I have, I have on the schedule these very specific moments that I know that, okay, I'm on the spot. Yeah. Next, a week from next Thursday, I'm going to have to show up and really bring the goods. I'm gonna to have to cry or fight or be scared or something like that. And I will lose sleep the closer that we get to those moments. Cause uh, I mean, if I don't please the man, he might fight. So you, you have like a routine, you pep yourself up? like. Oh you, yeah, you yeah. I, I gear myself up for the day. But uh, on the other side, I also look at it and say, well, not much is expected of me today. I got to get in and out of a car. I got to run across some cobblestones. I think. But I'll you never okay. know. I might knock on the door and say, "Hey, yeah. Tom, the yeah. weather's changing, and yeah. we just have to jump into that scene where you fall on the floor crying." Oh, and that does happen. Oh, everything's changing. So I'm, I'm a stand-up comedian, and for me, the response that I do straight—you know—it's it's right there and then. I get that. And for you guys, that you have to sort of wait. You guys make it. You craft your product, and then you sort of wait for the audience to. Is that is that kind of unnerving to like that? What's the response going to be? How are people going to respond? Because I don't have to wait. You guys have to. Well, as when we're making it, it's like we don't know if this is going to work right. or not. Right. We have no idea. It's always a mystery. And when you start having those first preview screenings, yeah. I mean, it is. It's terrifying because it's you know you might be able to refine a few things, but basically the movie is what it is. And this movie, you know, it worked out great. It tested really well. But I think stand-up com comedy. I think that is the the, the most terrifying possibility. And I I, th I think I think the true warriors of the entertainment world are the stand-up comedians. Our population is spiraling out of control. Inferno is the cure. They're going to wipe out half the world's population unless we find this virus. It's overpopulation. That's the, what the movie is about. Overpopulation. And I live in Mumbai. I live in a city where there are no doors on on the, on the trains because people are just hanging out, you know, with one leg like that. So I live this. And I was talking to Irfan about it. Where are, there's no other movies. You guys are the only ones making a movie about overpopulation. What? Why? Why? I wonder why that is. That's a good question. Dan Brown. Dan Brown has this uncanny ability. He's a very intelligent guy. Very thoughtful guy. Very much a humanist with a great heart. To look around at these push buttons uh -huh. that are controversial, and then he builds them into these very entertaining plots. Yeah. You know, this kind of game you get to play with the audience. Absolutely. It's part mystery, part suspense, thriller, with a great character at the center of it. But there's always this idea that's very present, very immediate, and very controversial. And you kind of can't help but think about it, uh, you know, and talk about it when the movie's over. Do you guys, do you guys have a debate? I was talking to Irfan yesterday, and he was talking about, like, what's the solution? How do we, how do we actually, like, in the real world, figure it out. I mean, I've, I've read the book and there's a different, I don't know, it's, it's such a big, huge question mark and I, 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 can I ask you guys that? Is that, is, you guys even, more, it's a tough question, I mean. Well, I don't think the movie offers any answers. No, I, I you know, I just have faith, man. Be inclusive and, yeah. uh, and embrace knowledge and uh, uh, come up with an idea and strive in order to uh, persevere in order to see it to his end. And don't feel just like an individual, be a, be, feel, a, you know, a part of the solution because you're a part of your community. Yeah, absolutely. So the movie's all about, you know, experiencing hell. The character actually goes through this whole series of hell. Do you guys have a personal hell, like a first world hell, like, you know, a baby crying on the plane type thing? Oh. What, what, do you, what would you guys, what is it? Like my Wi-Fi is not working or something like that? Oh, that's terrible. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, see, social influencer, that's where I come from. My Wi-Fi is not working. So that's really rough. Uh, you know, I think it's those, I think it's those, those moments where you're, you're around somebody, uh, who, for whatever reason, is whatever's going on in their life, they're coming unhinged, yeah. and you just see it. Yeah. And and whether it's some kind of madness, whether they're turning their anger, 
uh, you know, on, on, on another person or you, and we just sort of see that, oh my God, the, the social contract has just broken down here. Mm -hmm. what, 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 what am I gonna do about that? Yeah. How does that make me feel? Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's very hellish. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you. Oh, wait, before you do, the, you mentioned Indian cinema. I think for the last seven, eight, nine years that um, American audiences are beginning to pick up on the energy and the joy and the color and the music and the, the humanity absolutely. of Indian absolutely. cinema. And uh, so it's kind of interesting that just now Hollywood is beginning to have a place in Bollywood. Absolutely. And you know, the movies that are coming in, we, we are seeing the kind of movies that you guys are making. And I think the influence is coming to our movies as well. And I think it's a give and take. You know, we have our tradition where we don't use special effects like, like Hollywood does. We're still traditional filmmaking. But the storytelling is what we're learning. And me as a writer, a comedian, as a writer myself, I learn. And I try to imbibe that and say, how can I put this into my work, into my potential cinema world? Oh, cool. I think that's so. happening all over the globe with all the cultures. I think it's good news for fans. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you so Pleasure. much. Pleasure. Nice talking to you. Bye. Fun. Bye.